everybody. Miss Karen here from the Old Worthington Library. Welcome to Worthington's Online Story Times. Today we're doing stories about bedtime and going to sleep. But first we're going to do our opening song, The More We Get Together. And just a quick reminder, the signs for this song, this is more. Together we're going to put our hands together and like we're circling everybody in. And this is happy. And this is friends, so we're going to give our friends some hugs, just one finger at a time, okay? So let's go, you ready? The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be, for your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. And I am so happy that you could join us today. The first story I wanted to share with you is by Anita Bisherbosch. And it is called, Everyone is Yawning. It's brought to us by Clavis Publishing. The kitten is tired. Can you see? Look, the kitten is yawning. Can you yawn with the kitten? Here we go, ready? <laughs> the snake is yawning too. What a funny tongue. <sighs> is the raccoon tired? Oh, yes. Look, the raccoon is yawning. Let's yawn. Oh, the bunny is yawning very quietly. Look at those funny teeth. Ready? The piggy is yawning noisily. It grunts a bit. Ready? Oh. <laughs> the piggy is very tired. The crocodile shows all its teeth when it yawns, and there are a lot of them. Ready? <sighs> And the hippo? The hippo yawns too. Three times. You ready? That's one. That was two. Off to bed now, Arctic Fox. Can you see the Arctic Fox yawning? <sighs> the turtle yawns very slowly. <sighs> turtle is ready for bed. And the little child? Is the little child going to bed too? Oh, yes. One more yawn. And off to sleep. The owl. sleeping. Good night. I don't know about you, but I feel ready for bed now. Let's go ahead and we're going to sing a song. Um, and this is about some things that we do before we go to bed. 
So what are some things that you do in your family to get ready for bed? Sometimes you take a bath. Mm -hmm. Do you brush your teeth? I brush my teeth before bed too. And sometimes you yawn and stretch like we did in our book. So let's start with that. We're going to yawn and stretch. You ready? If it's bedtime and you know it, yawn and stretch. <sighs> if it's bedtime and you know it, yawn and stretch. <sighs> if it's bedtime and you know it and you really want to show it, if it's bedtime and you know it, Yawn and stretch. That <sighs> stretch feels so good. <sighs> now, if it's bedtime and you know it, take a bath. If it's bedtime and you know it, take a bath. If it's bedtime and you know it, and you really want to show it. If it's bedtime and you know it, take a bath. Now, if it's bedtime and you know it, read a book. If it's bedtime and you know it, read a book. If it's bedtime and you know it, and you really want to show it. If it's bedtime and you know it, read a book. If it's bedtime and you know it, say good night. Good night. If it's bedtime and you know it, say good night. Good night. If it's bedtime and you know it, and you really want to show it, if it's bedtime and you know it, say good night. Good night. Good job. For our next story, there's a part in it for you to help me. So there's a refrain that means something we say over and over again, where we say it's time for us to rest. And when we say the word rest, we're going to go to sleep. So the story is Baby Dream by Sunny Scribens comes to us from Barefoot Books. What is that baby doing? Yeah, that baby's yawning, isn't he? Cuddle with me, snug as can be, when it's time for us to rest. Let's take a look at your storybook when it's time for us to rest. I'll sing a song while you hum along when it's time for us to rest. Stretch head to toe, yawn big and slow, when it's time for us to rest. Lay down your head on your nice comfy bed when it's time for us to rest. Let's tuck you in tight and turn down the lights when it's time for us to rest. Everything seems just right for sweet dreams. Now it's time for us to rest. Good job. Let's sing a nice, soft, quiet lullaby, a song that's good for bedtime and nighttime. When you look out and it's not cloudy outside, you look up in the sky, what are some things that you might see? You might see the moon, mm -hmm. right? You might also see stars. So this song is about a star and I'll bet you've heard it before. Ready? We're gonna put our hands way up high and say, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Good job. 
Now, one of the things that I used to do to get ready for bed when I was a little girl was have my mom help me put my hair in curlers. They were little round rollers. She would fasten so that when I woke up in the morning, my hair would curl underneath. And I did that every night. This is a story about how a whole family gets their hair ready for bed. And it is called Bedtime Bonnet by Nancy Red and Nanika Myers. And it comes to us from Random House. In my family, when the sun goes down, our hair goes up. My brother twists and tightens each of his locks. Sis combs her hair in a swirl around her head. Daddy's hairbrush makes rows of black waves appear. Grandma rolls up her silver mane. Now see these in Grandma's hair? That's what I used to have in my hair when I was a little girl. Grandpa doesn't do anything to his hair because he doesn't have any. After Mommy gathers her corkscrew curls in a scarf, she calls for me. I scoot between her legs and she gets to work on my hair. I'm tender-headed, so she's extra gentle. Grandpa tells jokes as Mommy works her magic. He asks me, why does the bee have sticky hair? I don't know, so he says, because it uses a honeycomb. Silly grandpa. Finally, a braided crown is on top of my head and it's time for bed. Except, uh oh, what do you notice about her face? Yeah, she's frowning a little bit. Her eyes are kind of big. She's upset about something, I think. I can't find my bedtime bonnet. I need it to protect my hair from tangles and lint while I sleep. Wearing my bonnet at night is as important as brushing my teeth. Maybe Grandma knows where it is. She's covering her rollers with a kerchief. Grandma, have you seen my bonnet? She gets up and looks around. No, dear, I haven't. Maybe your sister knows. My sister's still in the bathroom. Her hair is spun in a wrap. Sis, have you seen my bonnet? She looks in all the bathroom drawers. No, but here's Daddy's wave cap. I take the cap to Daddy and he pops it onto his waves. Daddy, have you seen my bonnet? He looks around the sofa, but it's not there either. Where in the world could my bonnet be? I can't go to bed without it. She's looking pretty frustrated. Just then, my big brother walks in. A do-rag slipped over his locks. Does he know where it is? Big bro, have you seen my bonnet? He doesn't even pretend to look. He just says, ask grandpa. Where was her bonnet? <laughs> oh, grandpa. Do you think Grandpa needs that bonnet? <laughs> My bonnet is now in its proper place and I'm really sleepy. Everyone gives me kisses and hugs and Mommy and Daddy read me a story. Good night, family. In the morning, when the sun comes up, our hair comes down. Daddy smooths his ocean-like waves. Mommy scrunches her ribbony curls. Sis unwinds her foot-long wrap. My brother shakes out his lovely locks. While Grandma unsnaps her rollers, Grandpa shaves his head. And as for me, my bonnet comes off and my braids come out. Now we're all ready for a brand new day. All right, we're going to do now another song 
This one is called, there were five in the bed. So let's put our five little friends up on the bed here. Can you help me count? Here we go. There's one, two, three, four, five. And in this song, when we sing roll over, you can do a couple of things. If you have a baby and you want to lay them on the floor or in your lap, you can just kind of tilt them as we roll. Okay, rock them back and forth. Um, if you want to roll your hands, you can do that. If you want to turn around yourself, or if you want to lie down on the floor and roll around, you can do it that way too. All right, I'm gonna roll my hands just because I gotta stay up here and, and move the babies. All right, here we go. There were five in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. If you have five and you take away one, how many do you have left in the bed? One, two, three, four. There were four in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. Plunk. If you have four and you take away one, how many do you have left? Three, one, two, three. There were three in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they all rolled over and one fell out. Plunk. If you have three and you take away one, you have two. There were two in the bed and the little one said, roll over, roll over. So they both rolled over and one fell out. Blink. If you have two and you take away one, you have one left. There was one in the bed and the little one said, good night. Mwah. The last story I have for you today is called Mother, Mother, I Want Another and it is by Maria Polishkin Robbins, and it is published by Crown Publishers. It was bedtime in the mouse house. So, Mama Mouse took Baby Mouse to his room, and she read him a story, and she tucked the covers up around his chin, and she leaned down and gave him a good night kiss. And as she turned to leave the room, Baby Mouse said, Mother, Mother, may I have another? And Mrs. Mouse said, Oh, oh no. What am I going to do? Tonight, Baby Mouse wants another mother. So she ran to get Mrs. Frog. And Mrs. Frog came and sang a lullaby that went like this. Oh, punk mousey, close your eyes. I will bring you big fat flies. Baby Mouse shook his head and said, Mother, mother, I want another. So Mrs. Frog went to get Mrs. Duck. And Mrs. Duck came and sang a lullaby that went like this. Quack, quack, mousey, don't you fret. I'll bring you worms both fat and wet. Baby Mouse said, Mother, mother, I want another. So Mrs. Duck went to get Mrs. Pig. And Mrs. Pig came and sang a lullaby that went like this. Oink, oink, mousy, go to sleep. I'll bring some apples for you to keep. Baby Mouse said, Mother, mother, I want another. So Mrs. Pig ran to get Mrs. Donkey. Mrs. Donkey came and sang a lullaby that went like this. Hee-haw, mousey, hush-a-bye. 
I'll sing for you a lullaby. Baby Mouse had had enough. Mother, mother, I want another kiss. Oh, said Mrs. Donkey. And she gave Baby Mouse Well, well, said Mrs. Pig, and she gave Baby Mouse a kiss. Oh, so silly, said Mrs. Duck, and she gave Baby Mouse a kiss. My goodness, said Mrs. Frog, and she gave Baby Mouse a kiss. Mrs. Mouse tucked the covers back around Baby Mouse's chin and leaned down and gave him a kiss. And do you know what Baby Mouse said? Mother, mother, I want another. And Mrs. Mouse leaned down and gave Baby Mouse another All right, it's time for our closing rhyme. Let's stretch way up high. You ready? We are going to tickle the clouds. Tickle your toes. Now turn around and tickle your nose. Reach down low. Reach up high. Story time's over. Wave goodbye. Or today we should say good night, shouldn't we? Good night, sweet dreams.